The unstoppable Edotian warships burned another world and another species into ash and painful memory. Cruel reptilian smiles glinted in the hellish light of planetary death. But the humans were coming, to end the Dominion's reign, or die trying. Zephyrus was once a paradise, gleaming cities of crystal and light, flying cars zipping through cloudless skies, billions living in harmony with nature and the cosmos. Now, only charred rubble and bones remained. Warlord Pollux, butcher of civilizations, stood amidst the ruins, admiring his brutal handiwork, his beady black eyes empty of remorse, full of malice. Antares, his battle-scarred lieutenant, strode up, clawed feet crunching on shattered alien skulls. Sire, the Zephyrians are extinct, their global defenses crushed, survivors hunted down. As expected, they were insects before us, Lieutenant. Annoying insects, but insects nonetheless. The entire galaxy will learn from their mistake. All will kneel before the Dominion, or perish. Light years away, the UEDF prepared for total war. Admiral Ivanova briefed Earth's bravest men and women, her voice dripping with barely contained rage. Zephyrus is lost. Over six billion innocents slaughtered by those Edosian bastards. They've rampaged unchecked for too long, burning and killing without consequence. Entire species, entire histories, lost to their cruelty. It ends now. We are the galaxy's last hope against their evil. Ivanova paused. Let the horrible truth sink in. Earth's best and brightest looked at her, fear and grim determination on their faces. Humanity had never encountered an enemy like this, a species bred only for conquest and death, an empire spanning a thousand worlds and growing every day, technology hundreds of years beyond their own. I won't sugarcoat it, Ivanova said. We are outmatched in every way. The Edosians have never known defeat, but if we fall, they will not stop at Earth. They will exterminate us and move on to the next world, and the next, until the galaxy is lifeless. We cannot let that happen. We will not let that happen. Lieutenant Commander Lawrence Murphy stood up, his fists clenched, rage burning in his eyes. When do we start, sir? When do we bring the goddamn fight to them, no matter the cost? Now, Murphy... Humanity strikes back now, or never at all. We infiltrate their space, learn their secrets, find their hidden weaknesses, and then we hit them with everything we've got. We will make them regret every life they've taken. We will shatter their aura of invincibility. Most importantly, we will show them that humanity and the rest of the free galaxy will never stop fighting, will never submit, will never stop until the Dominion is nothing but a bad memory. Murphy grabbed his blaster rifle, checked the safety. He had a feeling that soon, very soon, he would paint alien worlds with Edosian blood. His hand-picked team of UEDF operatives surrounded him, checking weapons and gear. There was Briggs, his oldest friend and expert demo man, Carlson, the hacker, Sato, the sniper, and Novak, their medic, each one ready to die for the mission, to strike back at the cruelty of the Dominion, the shuttle shook as it weaved through the Edosian planetary defences, avoiding detection. Murphy gripped his blaster rifle tight. Finally, a chance to paint some alien scum red. Two minutes, the pilot yelled over the intercom. Depressurizing cabin now. The team slipped on their oxygen masks and checked their suit seals. No room for error. The shuttle doors hissed open, revealing the cold void of space and the sprawling Edosian supply depot growing larger in their view. Go, 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 Murphy roared. The team leaped out into the starry black, maneuvering with jetpacks towards an airlock. Briggs was on the door controls in seconds, his custom-built decryption device whirring. The airlock beeped green and slid open. Sato took point, scanning for hostiles with her rifle. Clear. They filed inside, maglocking boots clanging on metal grates, the pungent stench of Edosian sweat clogged the air. Grey-green bloodstains splattered the walls. Carlson found a console and jacked in, his fingers flying across the keys. I'm in their system, downloading intel on supply routes, fleet positions, officer lists. Damn, they really need some better firewalls. Cut the chatter and hurry it up, Murphy hissed. We're on borrowed time here. Murphy cursed. They hadn't even been here ten minutes. He turned to Carlson. 
You get what we need? A plasma bolt sizzled over their heads. An Edosian overseer stood in the doorway, beady eyes blazing with recognition and rage. More Dominion soldiers flooded in behind him, hissing and spitting. Contact rear, Novak warned. They were surrounded. The air filled with plasma and blood and the screams of the dying. Edosian and human. Sato dropped three with pinpoint headshots. Briggs sprayed the oncoming horde with his auto shotgun, turning grey-green flesh to mist. But there were too many. They just kept coming, clambering over their dead without hesitation. Novak took a hit to the shoulder and went down hard. Briggs was next, a smoking hole in his armor and blood leaking from his mouth. Fall back, Murphy ordered, dragging Briggs behind a crate. Carlson, find us a way out of this. There, the hacker pointed at a window. Escape shuttle, fueled and ready. Sato and Carlson laid down covering fire as Murphy and Novak hauled Briggs towards salvation. Plasma bolts singed the air, claws raked against armor, but then they were in, sealing the doors and blasting away from death. Dominion cruisers swooped in behind them, spitting lances of fire. The shuttle juked and jinked but couldn't shake the pursuers. Warning lights flashed, shields already failing. Murphy gritted his teeth, slammed a fist on navigation controls. There, the asteroid belt, we can lose them in the rocks. The shuttle plunged into the swirling field of stone and ice. The cruisers couldn't follow, not without ripping their hulls apart. A few more desperate maneuvers and their trackers went dark. They'd escaped. Murphy sagged back in the pilot chair, let out a ragged breath. Damn, that was too close. He checked on his team. Novak was patching up Briggs best he could, but the demo expert needed a real medic, and fast. Carlson poked his head in, face pale. Uh, Murph, we've got a big problem. Well, several, actually. Spit it out, Carlson. That last hit took out our comms and life support is failing. But here's the real kicker. We're almost out of fuel. We'll never make it back to UEDF space. Murphy swore, checked the star charts. A blinking light caught his eye, a planet just at the edge of their remaining range. There. We can land, make repairs, boost a signal to command. You sure? That rock looks pretty barren. You got a better idea. It's either that or we choke to death in this tin can. They hit Atmo hard the whole ship bucking and straining. Then a massive EMP burst slammed into them, frying what was left of their systems. Suddenly, the shuttle was a dead weight, plunging in an uncontrolled fall. Shouts and curses filled the air. Carlson frantically worked the emergency controls. The ground rushed up to meet them, jagged peaks and deep canyons. Uh. The sky ignited. Edosian warships rained hellfire on the Kirtari world, scouring its surface with searing plasma. Forests incinerated, mountains crumbled, the very ground quaked under the onslaught. But the Kirtari were ready, their electromagnetic shields held, absorbing the worst of the bombardment, and they were not alone. Lawrence stood with Zylak atop a cliff, watching the Edosian landing craft descend through the smoke. The human gripped his pulse rifle, its alien modifications humming with deadly potential, Steady, Zylak said. Wait for my signal. The landing craft touched down, hatches slamming open. Edosian shock troopers poured out, all muscles and armor and vicious snarls. They fanned out in battle formation, plasma cannons at the ready. Now! At Zylak's shout, the Kirtari ambush was sprung. EMP grenades arced from hidden positions detonating in brilliant blue flashes, the Edosians' weapons and armor stuttered and died, leaving them vulnerable. Lawrence and his team opened fire, cutting down the disoriented invaders with precise bursts. Briggs whooped over the comm as his shotgun atomized alien skulls. But the Edosians adapted quickly. They switched to crude blades and claws, surging forward with savage bloodlust. Lawrence found himself locked in a desperate melee, pulse rifle against serrated sword. All around, the battle devolved into a writhing mass of blood and viscera. Kirtari and human fought side by side, an unlikely alliance against a common foe. 
Plasma and lasers and razor-sharp talons flashed in the smoke-choked air. The Adotian's superior numbers began to tell. For every invader felled, two more took their place. Lawrence saw Kirtari and UEDF fighters dragged down and torn apart, their agonized screams echoing across the battlefield. Then the explosion started. Briggs had snuck behind enemy lines, planting EMP charges on the Adotian's heavy artillery and command posts. One by one they detonated, the electromagnetic pulses frying circuitry and sowing chaos. The Adotian advance faltered. Zylak leaped atop a smoldering tank, an alien battle cry on his mandibles. The Kirtari surged forward, hope kindling anew. Lawrence knew they had to press the advantage. He rallied his battered team and charged the Adotian command ship, still untouched by the EMP blasts. Zylak joined him, eyes hard with determination. They blew the hatches and stormed inside, pulse rifles blazing. Adotian warriors swarmed to meet them, the elite guard, fanatically devoted to their general. Lawrence took a hit to his shoulder, then another to his leg. But he pushed on, adrenaline and fury drowning the pain. The bridge doors loomed ahead. Lawrence primed a breaching charge and slapped it on the reinforced metal. The explosion tore them open, revealing the smoke-filled command deck. And there, amidst the ruins, stood General Antares, the Butcher of Zephyrus, clad in his signature bone-white armour, his obsidian eyes burned with malice and recognition. You, the general hissed, the human filth who dared to infiltrate my depot, I will flay the skin from your bones. Antares lunged, a blur of lethal edges and murderous intent. His twin plasma glaives flashed as he fell upon Lawrence and Zylak in a whirlwind of slashes. Lawrence parried frantically, the alien metal of his rifle screeching against the general's blades, Beside him, Zylak ducked and wove, his own polearm a emerald blur. They traded blows across the burning bridge, sparks and blood flying. Consoles shattered, bulkheads dented. The general was a virtuoso of violence, his every strike precise and ruthless. But Lawrence and Zylak were fueled by desperation, by the weight of billions depending on them. They pressed the attack, forcing Antares back step by step, the general's snarls turned to hisses of frustration. Lawrence saw his opening. He fainted left, then pivoted right as Antares took the bait. The general stumbled off balance for a split second. Zylak struck like a coiled serpent. His polearm lashed out, the crackling EMP tip slamming into Antares' chest. The general spasmed and fell, smoke curling from his armor's circuitry. Antares glared with impotent rage but even he could see the battle was lost. With a snarled command over his comm, the Adotian forces began to retreat back to their landing craft. The Kirtari and UEDF fighters cheered as they watched the invaders flee, harrying their retreat with EMPs and plasma. It seemed like victory was at hand. But then a new wave of dread swept the battlefield. Sensors screamed warnings as a massive hyperspace rupture split the sky. A vast Edosian fleet surged from the tear, weapons already spitting fire. And at its heart was a ship Lawrence recognized with sinking certainty, the Apex Predator, the flagship of Warlord Pollux himself. The monstrous vessel began to glow as it charged its main cannon, a world killer of unimaginable power. Pollux's voice boomed across every comm channel, dripping with genocidal fury. Miserable insects, you dare defy the Dominion? Dare to lay hands on my lieutenant? I will sear your wretched species from the cosmos. Lawrence felt the weight of inevitability, the cold equations of a war that had always been stacked against them. The Kirtari EMP weapon was still untested, a desperate gamble, and getting it aboard the Apex Predator would be a suicide mission. But what choice did they have? The alternative was extinction, not just for the Kirtari, but for humanity and every free species. Lawrence turned to Zylek and his battered team, resolve hardening in his gut. One last mission, one final roll of the dice. They would get that weapon on Pollux's ship. They would end this, even if it cost every last one of their lives. It was time for one last charge into the fire. The Apex Predator's bombardment intensified blasting smoking craters across the Kirtari homeworld. 
Forests ignited. Continents cracked. Lawrence gritted his teeth as he watched the destruction rain down. They were running out of time. Zylak, are you sure this plan will work? Lawrence gripped the Kirtari EMP weapon, a sleek, pulsing device the size of a briefcase. Lawrence nodded. He turned to Briggs and the battered remains of their UEDF and Kirtari forces. You know what to do. Hit those Adotian bastards planetside with everything you've got left. Keep their eyes off us. Briggs grinned, hefting his auto shotgun. You got it, Murph. We'll give them hell. You just take care of Pollux. Lawrence clasped his old friend's shoulder. See you on the other side. He and Zylak sprinted for the captured Edosian shuttle, its hull still scarred from the earlier battle. They strapped in, Zylak taking the controls. With a shuddering roar, the craft lifted off, rocketing towards the massive Edosian fleet above. Zylak keyed the comm, his voice a perfect mimicry of Edosian intonation. Clearance code Gamma Epsilon Rho, returning from planetside operations. Though the tense pause, Lawrence's hand tightened on his pulse rifle. If the codes gleaned from Antares didn't work... Code accepted, Zeta-9. You are clear to dock with the Apex Predator. Lawrence let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. They were in. He glanced out the viewport at Pollux's flagship. The monstrous dreadnought seemed to swallow the stars, its hull a bristling shell of weapons and armor. Getting aboard was one thing. Navigating that armored labyrinth to deliver the EMP would be another entirely. The shuttle shuddered as it entered the apex predator's docking bay. Massive clamps locked onto its hull, drawing it into the warship's armored belly. Lawrence and Zylak shared a look as the airlock cycled open. No turning back now. They emerged into a cavernous hangar, swarming with Edosian soldiers and technicians. Zylak had procured a pair of Edosian uniforms, and they were both fully kitted out, their faces hidden behind snarling war helms. The disguise wouldn't hold up under close scrutiny, but it should get them where they needed to go. This way, Zylak hissed. The main reactor is deep in the ship's core. They moved quickly, hugging the shadows. Around them, the dreadnought thrummed with barely restrained power. Edosian voices barked orders and updates over the intercoms. The frequent tremors told Lawrence that the bombardment was still underway. Briggs and the others must be putting up one hell of a fight. Zylak nodded, his eyes hard. Pollux will pay for what he's done to your people and mine. They split up, Lawrence sprinting down the corridor as Zylak vanished into the labyrinthine innards of the ship. Red emergency lights flashed and klaxons blared. Heavily armed Edosian soldiers appeared ahead, plasma rifles leveled at Lawrence's chest. He didn't slow down. His own rifle snapped up and he fired from the hip, superheated plasma bursts stitching a deadly line across the Adosian's armor. They fell, thrashing and howling. More soldiers poured into the corridor behind him. Plasma bolts sizzled past his head, scorching the bulkheads. He ducked into an alcove, primed a plasma grenade, and tossed it into their midst. The explosion shook the deck, spraying molten shrapnel and seared reptilian flesh. Lawrence pushed on, fighting his way through the ship's elite guards. Each deck brought more resistance, more plasma scorching his armor, but each deck also brought him closer to the bridge, closer to Pollux. He could feel the malevolent presence of the Edosian warlord like a dark weight in his mind, the architect of so much misery, so much death, the monster who had ordered the genocide of entire species. Rage fueled Lawrence's steps, his grip tight on his rifle. He would end this, even if it cost him everything. The bridge doors loomed ahead, a massive blast shield of reinforced alloy. Lawrence didn't slow. He leveled his rifle and fired, the supercharged plasma bursts tearing through the barrier like it was paper. The metal shrieked and buckled, glowing molten at the edges. He hit the weakened doors at a sprint, his armor-clad shoulder slamming into them with bone-crushing force. They toppled inward, and he rolled through, coming up in a combat crouch, rifle leveled. The bridge was a maelstrom of activity. Edosian officers shouted orders and updates, their clawed hands flying over holographic displays. And there, at the center of it all, was Pollux. The Edosian warlord was a towering figure in bone-white armor, 
his eyes pits of malevolent obsidian. He turned slowly to face Lawrence, his lipless mouth curling in a vicious smile. So the insects have come scuttling aboard my ship. Pollux's voice was a rasping hiss, dripping with sadistic amusement. I will enjoy crushing you beneath my heel. Lawrence opened fire, plasma burst screaming across the bridge. But Pollux was inhumanly fast, his form blurring as he dodged the shots. The warlord lunged, closing the distance in an eye blink. A massive fist slammed into Lawrence's chest, sending him flying backwards. He crashed into a console, felt ribs crack. Pollux was on him again, a blow to the head that made stars explode across his vision. Lawrence reeled, blood in his mouth. He'd never faced strength and speed like this. Pollux was toying with him, a predator, savouring its prey's futile struggles. The warlord's clawed hand closed around Lawrence's throat, hauling him into the air. Pollux's obsidian eyes bore into his, alight with malice. But did you really think you could defeat me, human? I have brought a thousand worlds to their knees, exterminated civilizations beyond counting, and you thought you could stop me. A sudden blinding flash, a crackling wave of force that washed over the bridge like an electrified tsunami. Pollux stiffened, his eyes going wide, his grip slackened, and Lawrence dropped to the deck, gasping for air. Zylak had done it. The EMP was live, its pulse frying every Adosian neural system on the ship. Lawrence stood on the bridge of the apex predator, staring out at the stars. The weight of the moment settled on his shoulders. The warlord Pollux defeated, the Adosian fleet in disarray. A glimmer of hope in a war that had seemed unwinnable. But there was no time to rest. Zylak approached, his insectoid features grim. The Adosians may be leaderless, but they still hold dozens of worlds in their grasp. Billions still suffer under their rule. Lawrence nodded, his jaw set. Then we take those worlds back, one by one until every trace of the Dominion is gone. And so began the Liberation Campaign. Lawrence and his team, now legends among the UEDF and Kirtari, struck at Edosian strongholds across the galaxy. They raided supply depots, sabotaged shipyards, and incited uprisings among the conquered populations. On the planet Sirius VI, Lawrence stood before a crowd of emaciated Yilthari slaves, their once proud frames withered by Edosian cruelty. The Dominion told you that resistance was futile, Lawrence shouted, his voice carrying across the plaza, that you were weak, helpless before their might. But look around you. The warlord is dead, his fleet in ruins. We can fight, we can win. The Yilthari surged forward, their chains shattering as they took up arms against their oppressors. Lawrence and his team fought alongside them, pulse rifles blazing as they drove the Edotians from the capital. But even as the tide turned, a new threat emerged. Lawrence received an encrypted message from an unknown source, requesting a meeting on the neutral world of Omicron per se. Wary of a trap, but intrigued, Lawrence and Zelak made the journey. In a dimly lit bar they were approached by a hooded figure. The stranger revealed himself as Rigel, an Edosian rebel who had long opposed Pollux's tyranny. Not all of us thirsted for conquest, Rigel said, his voice a rasping whisper. Some of us remember a time before the Dominion, when our species sought knowledge instead of slaughter. Lawrence eyed the Adotian warily. Why contact us? Why now? Rigel leaned forward, his eyes glinting. Because Pollux's ambition did not die with him, he was developing a weapon, a planet killer capable of destroying entire star systems. If his loyalists complete it, they could bring the galaxy to its knees. Lawrence and Zylak exchanged a grim look. The stakes had just gotten higher. Together with Rigel, they began planning a daring raid on the secret research facility housing the weapon. It would require all their skill, all their courage, and perhaps a healthy dose of luck. The facility was hidden in the heart of a dying star, its radiation and gravitational forces providing a deadly natural defense. But Lawrence and his team had faced worse odds before. They gathered a strike force of their most trusted allies, UEDF commandos, Qatari shadow walkers, and Rigel's Edosian rebels. They armed themselves with the best tech the Alliance could provide, 
phased plasma rifles, grav-shielded armor, and AI-guided drones. As their stealth ship approached the facility, alarms began to blare. They had been detected. Sleek Edosian fighters swarmed from hidden hangars, their plasma cannons spitting fire. Lawrence strapped into the pilot's chair, his hands flying over the controls. Hang on! he shouted as he threw the ship into a dizzying spin, dodging the incoming fire. Zylak manned the rear guns, his compound eyes tracking targets with inhuman precision. Edosian fighters exploded under his onslaught, but more kept coming. Rigel pointed to a small opening in the facility's shields, a maintenance hatch for repair drones. There, that's our way in. Lawrence gritted his teeth and aimed for the gap. The ship shuddered as it skimmed the edge of the star's corona, alarms screaming warnings about hull temperature and radiation. At the last second he cut the engines and fired the reverse thrusters. The ship slammed into the hatch, crumpling it like foil. They were in. But their arrival had not gone unnoticed. As they disembarked into the facility's hangar, they were met with a hail of plasma fire. Genetically engineered Edosian super-soldiers poured from every doorway, their massive frames encased in power armor. Lawrence and his team took cover behind fuel canisters and maintenance equipment. They returned fire, the air thick with the stench of ozone and burnt flesh. Zylak tossed an EMP grenade, the pulse frying the circuits of a dozen super-soldiers. Rigel wove between the enemy, his twin plasma blades flashing as he cut them down with deadly grace. But for every super-soldier they felled, Two more seemed to take their place. Lawrence knew they couldn't last long against these odds. We need to move, he shouted over the din of battle. Rigel, where's the weapon? The Adotian rebel consulted a stolen schematic of the facility. The central lab three levels down, but the way is guarded by automated defenses, turrets, drones, force fields. Lawrence ejected a spent power cell from his rifle and slammed in a fresh one. Then we'll just have to fight through them. We haven't come this far to fail now. With grim nods, the strike force began their push into the heart of the facility. They battled through cramped corridors and cavernous labs, past sentry guns and killbots. Plasma scorched the walls, and the screams of the dying echoed through the halls. At last, battered and bleeding but unbroken, they reached the central lab, and there, pulsing with malevolent energy, was the planet killer. It was a sphere of utter darkness, a miniature black hole contained within a crackling containment field. Rigel approached a nearby console, his claws flying over the keys. The containment field is the key, we need to disrupt it, allow the singularity to consume this entire facility. Lawrence and Zylak began planting explosive charges around the field generator, while the rest of the strike force took up defensive positions. They knew it was only a matter of time before the remaining super-soldiers arrived. As if on cue, the doors to the lab exploded inward. A tide of armored Edosians surged through, plasma rifles blazing. The strike force met them head-on, a desperate battle erupting amidst the whine of the overloading containment field. Lawrence ducked under a super-soldier's swing and jammed his rifle into the gap under its helm. He pulled the trigger, the plasma bolt decapitating the creature, Beside him, Zylak danced between the enemy, his EMP staff a blur as he brought down foe after foe. Rigel was a whirlwind of flashing blades, his plasma swords cutting through armor like butter, but even he could not hold back the tide forever. They began a fighting retreat, laying down a withering hail of covering fire as they backed towards the exit. The containment field was sparking now, the black hole straining against its weakening bonds. The last of the strike force made it to the hangar, just as a bone-shaking rumble echoed through the facility. The charges had detonated, the containment field collapsing under the onslaught. They piled into their battered ship, not even waiting for the ramp to close before Lawrence fired the engines. They rocketed out of the hangar, the facility crumbling behind them as the unleashed singularity began to devour it from the inside out. In the aftermath, as the galaxy began the slow process of rebuilding, Lawrence couldn't help but feel a sense of hope. The Adotian threat had been defeated, a new era of peace and cooperation dawning. 
but he knew that vigilance would be the price of that peace, and he and his allies would be ready always to defend it. The galaxy rejoiced as the Edosian Dominion crumbled, its iron grip on countless worlds finally broken, but even as the rubble settled and the fires cooled, a new darkness was gathering. In the shadows of abandoned Edosian bases, a warlord named Draven rallied the broken remnants of the Dominion's forces. His eyes blazed with fanatical hatred, his voice a rasping snarl of defiance. The Dominion will rise again, he promised his followers, and all who oppose us will burn. Draven and his loyalists scavenged the ruins of Edosian outposts, amassing weapons and technology, but their greatest prize was a cache of advanced genetic engineering equipment, the tools that had once created the Dominion's feared super-soldiers. In hidden laboratories, Draven's scientists worked feverishly, twisting Edosian DNA into new and terrifying forms. They created warriors of unmatched strength and savagery, living weapons driven by a single imperative, obey Draven, destroy his enemies. The first sign of the new threat came in a series of brutal raids on the fledgling Galactic Alliance. Heavily armed Edosian shock troopers, moving with unnatural speed and coordination, struck at shipyards, supply depots, and communications hubs. They left only destruction in their wake, disappearing back into the void before defense forces could respond. Entire colonies went dark, their populations slaughtered or enslaved. The Alliance reeled, struggling to understand the nature of this new enemy. On Earth, Lawrence received a Priority One communique from UEDF High Command. The face of Admiral Ivanova appeared on the screen, her expression grim. Commander Murphy, we have a situation. A new Edosian warlord has emerged, and he's unleashing hell across the galaxy. We need you and your team to hunt him down and put an end to this, fast. Lawrence nodded, his jaw tightening. We'll get it done, Admiral, whatever it takes. He gathered his old comrades, Zylak the Kirtari warrior scientist, Rigel the Edosian rebel, Briggs, Sato, Novak, the best of UEDF. They boarded a sleek new warship, the Retribution, and set out into the stars. The trail of destruction led them to a burning world on the edge of Alliance space. The colony's defense fleet hung shattered in orbit, wreckage tumbling slowly end over end. On the surface, the once thriving cities were blasted ruins, corpse choked and echoing with carrion cries. But there were survivors, ragged bands of humans and aliens, emerging from hidden bunkers and shattered buildings. They spoke of armored giants smashing through barricades like they were made of paper, shrugging off blaster fire and cutting down civilians with cruel blades. One detail chilled Lawrence to the bone. The attackers bore the sigil of the Edosian Dominion, a stylized claw gripping a cracked planet, but altered, defiled, the mark of Draven. Zylak analyzed fragmented sensor data and picked up a residual ion trail, leading deeper into the void. The retribution powered up its drives and leaped into warp, racing towards the next battlefield. They clashed with Draven's forces again and again, from the storm-racked skies of gas giants to the skeletal remains of long-dead civilizations. Each time, the enemy grew stronger, faster, more ruthless. Each time, the toll on Lawrence's team grew heavier. But they learned. They adapted. Zylak and Rigel worked tirelessly to develop new weapons and tactics, turning the enemy's own genetic enhancements against them. Briggs rigged traps and ambushes, collapsing buildings and blasting canyons to channel the enemy into kill zones. Sato picked off enemy leaders with mile-long rifle shots, sowing confusion in their ranks. Through it all, through the fire and the blood and the screams, Lawrence held his team together with iron will and unbreakable loyalty. They were more than soldiers now. They were family, bound by loss and sacrifice and a shared purpose. But even as they racked up victories, a troubling pattern emerged. Draven's forces were too well equipped, their ships and weapons too advanced and numerous for a ragtag band of hardliners. Someone was supplying them, supporting them from the shadows. The truth came in a forgotten system, on a derelict space station spinning aimlessly between the stars. 
There, in a shattered data vault, Rigel found records of a secret transmission beamed from beyond the galaxy's edge. A message of support and dark promises, signed with an alien glyph that none of them recognized. Lawrence felt a chill run down his spine. Draven was not alone. Something else was out there, watching from the void, pulling the strings. But there was no time to dwell on that revelation. Draven's forces were on the move again, and the trail led to a dense nebula on the fringes of Edocean space. Long-range scans detected a massive structure hidden within the swirling gases and charged particles, a fortress station bristling with weapons and shielding. The retribution slipped into the nebula, sensors straining to penetrate the interference. They emerged in the shadow of the fortress, its armoured hull looming over them like a crouching predator. There was no subtlety, no clever plan, just a straight-up assault, a desperate charge into the jaws of hell. Lawrence gathered his team in the hangar bay, looking into their eyes one by one. This is it, he said, his voice steady and sure. Draven is in there, and we're going to take him down. It won't be easy, it won't be clean, but we're going to get it done, because that's what we do, for Earth, for the Kirtari, for every soul the Dominion has ever trampled. Let's bring the reckoning, bring. They boarded assault shuttles and rocketed towards the station, weapons primed and hearts pounding. The fortress's guns opened up, filling the void with searing light and shrapnel. Two shuttles vanished in blooms of flame, but the rest pushed through, skidding into the landing bays in a shower of sparks. Lawrence was first out, pulse rifle barking as Edosian warriors swarmed to meet them. Zylak was at his side, EMP staff crackling, each blow sending enemies convulsing to the deck. Rigel moved like a ghost, appearing behind enemy lines and leaving a trail of slashed throats and sparking implants. They fought their way deeper into the station, corridor by blood-slicked corridor. Automated defences rained fire from the walls and ceilings, and every shadow held a bladed Edosian horror. But they didn't stop. They couldn't stop. In the heart of the fortress, they found the gene labs, vat-grown abominations stumbling from shattered growth tanks. They burned them, seared that obscenity from the universe. And there, in the central chamber, they found Draven. But not the proud warlord, the defiant fanatic. What faced them now was a twisted fusion of flesh and metal, a monstrous hybrid wired into the station's systems. One arm ended in a crackling energy cannon, the other in a brutal power claw. You are too late, Draven rasped, his voice a grating electronic snarl. The process is already beginning. My army will rise and the galaxy will fall. Not today, Lawrence said and opened fire. The chamber dissolved into a maelstrom of energy beams and shrapnel, consoles shattering and equipment erupting in flames. Draven was a blur of motion, his cannon spitting searing death, his claw shearing through armor like paper. Draven roared a sound of pain and fury, and a massive EMP pulse erupted from his cannon. It washed over Lawrence, over all of them, frying weapons and shields, sending them tumbling. Draven loomed over Lawrence, cannon glowing as it charged for a final blast. Lawrence looked up at the monster, his vision blurring, his muscles screaming. His rifle was slag, his armor a ruin. This was the end. And then Zylak was there, leaping onto Draven's back, jamming his staff into the pulsing heart of the Abomination's power core. The EMP feedback tore through Draven's systems, flesh and metal alike bursting and blackening. The warlord toppled, a fused and twitching heap. Zylak slumped beside him, the staff falling from his nerveless claws. Lawrence dragged himself to the Kirtari's side, cradling his friend's broken form. You did it, he whispered through cracked lips. You saved us all. Zylak's compound eyes flickered, meeting Lawrence's gaze. A small, pained smile curved his mandibles. No, my friend, we did it, together. And with that, the warrior scientist breathed his last. Lawrence bowed his head, tears cutting through the grime on his face. Rigel and the others found him there, amidst the wreckage and the bodies. They said nothing, just laid comforting hands on his shoulders, shared in his grief. In the end, they rigged the station's reactor to detonate, a pyre to burn away the last traces of Draven's evil. They limped back to the retribution, battered and diminished, but alive. 
victorious. The galaxy would rebuild, the Alliance would grow stronger, and they would be ready, Lawrence and his band of brothers and sisters, ready for whatever dark tide came next. For in the vastness of space, in the crucible of war, they had found something unbreakable. The modified EMP device pulsed with crackling energy as Lawrence aimed it at the overseer. The monstrous being snarled, his form flickering and warping with each blast. Around them the flagship shuddered and groaned, its biomechanical systems overloading under the relentless assault. Hey, it's working, Zylak shouted over the din of battle. Keep firing! Lawrence gritted his teeth and held down the trigger, pouring every ounce of his rage and determination into the weapon. The overseer roared in pain and fury, lashing out with tendrils of searing energy. One struck Lawrence in the chest, sending him flying across the chamber. His armor smoked and sizzled, but he pushed himself back to his feet, refusing to fall. Rigel leaped forward, his plasma blades flashing as he severed the overseer's tendrils one by one. The overseer bellowed in rage, his form swelling and pulsing with malevolent power. Fools! the overseer boomed. You think you can defeat me? I have conquered a thousand worlds, enslaved a million species. I am the Convergence, and I will not be denied. But even as the words left his maw, the EMP device unleashed its final pulse. The overseer screamed, a sound that tore at the fabric of reality itself, his form convulsed and shattered, breaking apart into a million shards of light. A massive shockwave erupted from the overseer's disintegrating form, slamming into Lawrence and his team. They were hurled back, their weapons and armor sparking and shorting out. All around them, the flagship was coming apart, its structures melting and warping as the EMP pulse tore through its systems. Alarms blared and emergency lights flashed, bathing everything in a hellish red glow. We need to get out of here, Rigel shouted, his voice barely audible over the cacophony of destruction. This whole place is going to blow. Lawrence hauled himself upright, his head ringing and his vision blurring. He staggered towards the exit, his team close behind. They raced through the collapsing corridors, dodging falling debris and gouts of flame. The ship bucked and heaved beneath their feet, its artificial gravity fluctuating wildly. They were thrown from wall to wall, battered and bruised, but still moving, still fighting for every step. They burst into the hangar bay, a cavernous space filled with the twisted wrecks of biomechanical fighters. Their own shuttle stood at the far end, a battered but beautiful sight. But the bay was not empty. A horde of the Overseer's elite guards stood between them and escape, their weapons trained on the intruders. These were the best of the Convergence's warriors, each one a living weapon, bred for nothing but war and slaughter. Lawrence and his team skidded to a halt, their weapons snapping up. There was no time for tactics, no time for clever plans. There was only the fight, the desperate, blood-pounding chaos of close-quarters combat. They charged forward, plasma rifles and EMP blasters blazing. The Convergence warriors met them head-on, their own weapons spitting death and destruction. Lawrence lost himself in the battle, his rifle an extension of his will, his every movement a blur of instinct and training. He saw Zylak fighting beside him, the Kirtari's staff a whirlwind of crackling energy. Rigel danced through the enemy ranks, his blades slicing through armor and flesh like they were made of air. But for every warrior they felled, two more seemed to take their place. They were being driven back, step by bloody step, the shuttle receding further and further away. A plasma bolt struck Lawrence in the shoulder, spinning him around. Another slammed into his chest, burning through his armor. He fell to one knee, his vision going gray at the edges. This was it, he thought. This was how it ended, not in the glory of victory, but in the desperate, frantic scramble of retreat. But then a voice cut through the haze of pain and despair, a voice he knew, a voice that had been with him through every trial and tribulation. Get up, you bastard! Briggs roared, his shotgun booming as he blasted a path through the enemy ranks. We're not dying here, not today! Lawrence looked up to see his old friend standing over him, his armor dented and scorched, his face a mask of blood and determination. And beyond him the shuttle, its engines roaring to life, its ramp lowered invitingly. 
Lawrence gritted his teeth and surged to his feet, a new fire burning in his veins. He charged forward, his team at his side, their weapons blazing, their battle cries ringing through the collapsing hangar. They fought like demons, like heroes, like the last hope of a galaxy on the brink, and against all odds they made it. They leaped aboard the shuttle just as the ramp was closing, just as the hangar bay disintegrated in a maelstrom of fire and shrapnel. The shuttle rocketed away from the dying flagship, weaving through the debris field of the shattered Convergence fleet. Lawrence slumped against the bulkhead, his breath coming in ragged gasps, his armor sticky with blood. But he was alive, his team was alive, and the overseer, the great and terrible leader of the Convergence, was nothing more than atoms scattered across the stars. It was a victory, hard-fought and blood-bought, but as Lawrence looked out the viewport at the endless expanse of space, he knew that the fight was far from over. But for now, for this one shining moment, they had won. They had stood against the darkness and the terror, and they had emerged triumphant. Lawrence closed his eyes, a small smile playing across his lips. Whatever came next, whatever horrors the future held, he knew one thing for certain. He and his team would be ready. They would fight and they would win. For the galaxy, for the future. The modified EMP device pulsed and crackled in Lawrence's hands, the energy building to a crescendo. With a final, desperate roar, he aimed it at the overseer's writhing form and pulled the trigger. A blinding flash of light erupted from the device, a searing wave of electromagnetic force that slammed into the overseer like a tidal wave. The monstrous being convulsed, its energy form flickering and distorting as the pulse disrupted its very essence. All around them, the flagship shuddered and bucked, explosions blossoming across its hull as the EMP feedback tore through its systems. Consoles exploded in showers of sparks, bulkheads warped and twisted, the very fabric of the ship coming apart at the seams. We need to go now, Zylak shouted over the cacophony of destruction. Lawrence nodded, tossing aside the spent EMP device. They sprinted for the hangar bay, dodging falling debris and gouts of flame. The overseer's elite guards, their hive mind control severed, stumbled about in confusion, easy prey for Lawrence's team. They burst into the hangar to find it in chaos. Convergence ships and equipment tossed about like toys in a storm. But there, in the center of the maelstrom, was their salvation, a Convergence shuttle, its hull battered but intact. They scrambled aboard, Rigel taking the controls as Lawrence and Zylak manned the weapons. The shuttle tore out of the hangar just as the flagship's power core went critical, a blinding fireball consuming the once mighty vessel from within. The shockwave caught the shuttle, sending it tumbling end over end. Lawrence gripped his seat, teeth rattling in his skull as Rigel fought to regain control. Finally, the ship righted itself, and they watched in awe as the Overseer's flagship broke apart, massive chunks of hull and debris spinning off into the void. Across the battlefield, the Convergence forces faltered, their ships drifting aimlessly as the Overseer's control was severed. The Galactic Alliance, seizing the moment, surged forward, their weapons tearing into the disorganized enemy. Lawrence slumped back in his seat, exhaustion and relief warring within him. They had done it. Against all odds, they had defeated the Overseer and broken the Convergence's hold on the galaxy. But even as the Alliance ships celebrated, their comm channels filled with cheers and cries of victory, a chill ran down Lawrence's spine. Something Zylak had said during the battle, a half-whispered fear that had been drowned out by the chaos. The Overseer, he was just a herald. Lawrence turned to his friend, dread coiling in his gut. What do you mean? Zylak met his gaze, his compound eyes filled with a terror Lawrence had never seen before. The artifacts we found, the ruins on those dead worlds, they speak of a cycle, a pattern of destruction that has played out again and again across the eons. Rigel leaned forward, his face grim. The Convergence, the Overseer, they were just the latest in a long line of conquering armies, all serving some greater power. Lawrence felt the weight of those words settle on his shoulders like a physical burden. The overseer had been a monster, a being of unfathomable power, 
and he had been a mere servant to something even worse. He looked out the viewport at the stars, at the galaxy they had fought so hard to save, but now that victory felt hollow, a brief respite before an even greater storm. Then we keep fighting, he said, his voice hard with resolve. We gather every ally, every resource we can, and we take the fight to this ancient evil, wherever it hides. Zylak and Rigel nodded, their faces set with the same grim determination. They knew the odds, knew the scale of the threat they now faced. But they also knew that they had no choice. The fate of the galaxy, of every living being within it, depended on them. As the shuttle set course for the Alliance fleet, Lawrence began to plan, his mind racing with strategies and contingencies. They would need weapons, ships, armies, but most of all, they would need courage. For they were about to embark on a mission unlike any before, a journey into the unknown to confront a horror beyond imagining, and they would not stop, could not stop, until the galaxy was truly free. Lawrence and his allies gathered aboard the Retribution, their faces grim with determination. They had fought against impossible odds before, but the journey ahead would test them like never before. Zylak pored over the ancient star charts, his compound eyes glinting in the holographic light. The artifacts point to a region beyond the galactic rim, a void where no star shines. It is there we must go to confront the source of the cycle. Rigel nodded, his scarred face set like stone. We've all seen the visions, felt the weight of the horrors that await us. But we cannot falter now. The fate of every living being depends on our success. Lawrence stood at the helm, his hand resting on the warp drive controls. Then let's not keep them waiting any longer. Retribution, engage. The ship leaped forward, the stars blurring into streaks of light as they hurtled towards the unknown. Days turned into weeks as they navigated the treacherous currents of the intergalactic void, guided only by the cryptic messages left by long-dead civilizations. Strange, twisted worlds loomed out of the darkness the remnants of once thriving species, now reduced to desolate wastelands. The crew explored crumbling ruins and decaying cities, piecing together the tragic stories of those who had fallen to the cosmic horror they now sought to defeat. As they ventured deeper into the void, the visions began. Nightmarish scenes of entire worlds consumed by an insatiable hunger, of trillions of souls screaming in agony as they were devoured. The crew's minds buckled under the onslaught of psychic emanations, their sanity fraying at the edges. But they pressed on, driven by a resolve that transcended mere duty or loyalty. They were the galaxy's last hope, the only ones who could break the cycle of destruction that had played out for eons. And then, at last, they reached their destination. A dead galaxy, its stars long since extinguished, its worlds nothing more than barren husks, at its heart, a pulsing mass of darkness, a wound in the fabric of reality itself. The retribution shuddered as it approached, its senses overwhelmed by the sheer wrongness of the entity that awaited them. Lawrence gripped the controls, his knuckles white, as he guided the ship into the very maw of madness. They emerged into a realm of chaos, a nightmare made manifest, and there at the centre of it all was the Devourer, the creature defied description, a writhing mass of tentacles, eyes, and gaping maws that seemed to extend into infinity. Its very presence tore at the mind, threatening to unravel the sanity of all who beheld it. But Lawrence and his allies stood firm, their weapons primed and their hearts steeled against the horror. They had come too far to falter now. The battle was joined, a desperate struggle against an enemy that defied the very laws of reality, the Retribution's weapons tore into the Devourer's flesh, eliciting howls of rage and pain that shook the very foundations of the universe. But for every wound they inflicted, the creature seemed to grow stronger, its hunger unabated. One by one, Lawrence's friends and allies fell, their minds and bodies consumed by the Devourer's insatiable appetite. Zylak was the first to go, his brilliant mind shattered by the creature's psychic onslaught. Rigel followed soon after, his body torn apart by the Devourer's writhing tentacles. Lawrence watched in horror as his comrades were consumed, their screams echoing in his mind. 
but even as despair threatened to overwhelm him, he remembered the prototype weapon, the last hope of the galaxy. With a roar of defiance, he activated the device, pouring every ounce of his will into its activation. The weapon hummed with power, a blinding light erupting from its core. The devourer shrieked in agony as the rift tore open, a gaping wound in the fabric of space-time. The creature's form began to unravel, its essence drawn inexorably into the vortex. But Lawrence, too, was caught in the maelstrom, his body disintegrating as the raw energy consumed him. He felt no pain, only a sense of peace as he watched the devourer vanish into the rift, its screams fading into silence. The rift collapsed, sealing the creature away for all eternity. The galaxy was saved, but at a terrible cost. Zylak, Rigel, and the few surviving members of the Alliance gathered aboard the Retribution, their hearts heavy with grief and loss. They set course for home, the weight of their victory a bitter pill to swallow. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.